Okay, sorry for the interruption. We will continue now. Continue, please. The, in the upper zone, the veins are inferior lateral uh, to the arteries, while in the lower zones, the veins are almost horizontal and the arteries are almost vertical. The inferior pulmonary veins uh, drain anteriorly and superiorly from the lung bases to the left atrium. If seen end on on the chest film, they may simulate a pulmonary mass. The hilar point is where the upper lobe vein crosses the descending pulmonary aorta and uh, is projected over the sixth uh, posterior interspace and is uh, one centimeter lower than the left that's on the right side. Uh, the lateral, uh, on the lateral chest uh, radiograph, uh, the fissures uh, are uh, the, the, the fissures, the trachea, the bronchi, and uh, vasculatures uh, are seen. The uh, fissures, the right, uh, the left uh, oblique fissure is uh, more vert vertical and reaches the diaphragm more posteriorly than the uh, that on the uh, right side. Here we see it as uh, a linear uh, radio opacity that uh, reaching the uh, diaphragm. The anterior ends of the oblique fissure are 2 uh, to 3 cm behind the anterior chest wall. As the fissures are uh, undulating, they may appear to be doubled in parts and are often not seen in entirety uh, of the uh, lateral chest radiograph. Uh, the trachea is uh, seen to enter the uh, thorax uh, just midway between the sternum and the uh, vertebrae. And, uh, <coughs> It's uh, owing uh, to the posterior inclination uh, and it ends closer uh, to the vertebrae. We have the posterior, uh, in the lateral uh, chest radiograph, the tracheoesophageal strip that is formed uh, by the uh, uh, posterior uh, wall uh, of the trachea and the anterior uh, esophageal wall, and it is uh, visible if there is uh, air within the esophagus. So, this tracheoesophageal strip, you may see it, you may not. Yes. Yeah. The on. Yeah. If there is air in the uh, esophagus or not? Yes. Okay. Uh, the bronchi, uh, the left main bronchus, uh, being more horizontal, is uh, seen as a circular structure, while the right main bronchus is more vertical and is therefore tubular. The upper lobe bronchi may be seen as two rounded uh, radiolucencies projected over the lower end of the trachea, with the right being one to two centimeter higher than the uh, left. The right upper lobe uh, bronchus is seen about half the time, 50% uh, of the cases, while the left is seen in about 75% of cases. The lower lobe bronchi may be seen uh, running in an uh, inferior posterior course in many cases. The uh, left uh, uh, lower uh, lobe bronchus is the more posterior and has a curved configuration in its anterior aspect merging with the orifice of the upper lobe bronchus. Uh, the vasculature, uh, the pulmonary uh, arteries may be seen at the hilum forming a conglomerate density with the pulmonary veins. The right pulmonary artery is seen end on and is oval in appearance, while the left pulmonary artery is common shaped as it arcs over the left uh, main bronchus as it is seen here. Here the right uh, pulmonary artery and this is the left pulmonary artery seen as a comma shape and the other one is seen as a oval radio density uh, sorry radio opacity on computed tomography uh, the fissures are less visible than on uh, plain radiographs uh, they are seen as regions of relative avascularity on the outer cortex of the lobe where tapering vessels are uh, less visible uh, the bronchi may be seen depending upon their size and orientation. Narrow slices uh, improve more visualization of the bronchi. The horizontally oriented uh, bronchi, such as the anterior uh, um, segments of the upper lobes and the uh, superior segments of the lower lobes, may be seen as a tubular structure, while the vertically orientated bronchi, such as the main bronchi, the bronchus intermediates, may be seen uh, as a circular air filled structure. The posterior wall of the right main bronchus and its division into upper lobe bronchus and bronchus intermediates, uh, intermediates should be outlined by lung as it invaginates into the azygoesophageal recess. Uh, how the vasculature appear on CT? 
the relationship of the pulmonary arteries and veins to the bronchi are best seen at higher level. The right pulmonary artery is anterior to the right bronchus, as we explained it in the first image, and the right superior pulmonary vein may be seen anterior to this. The left pulmonary artery is seen anterior to the left main bronchus and above it on a higher section. So the pulmonary veins are anterior to the pulmonary arteries in uh, both sides. The lower lobe artery is seen posterior lateral to the lower lobe bronchus. The left superior pulmonary vein is separated from the uh, lower lobe artery at higher level by the left bronchus. The mediastinum. It is uh, derived from a Greek word meaning uh, the media stair or standing in the middle in between the two lungs and their pleura. The media the mediastinum is divided into superior, anterior, middle, and uh, posterior division by an imaginary line that is um, passing from the sternal angle anteriorly to the T4 vertebrae posteriorly. The structures located above this line are known as the superior mediastinum, such as the aortic arch and its branch, brachiocephalic veins, and superior vena cava, trachea, esophagus, thoracic duct, lymph nodes, and nerves. The uh, uh, structures located below this line are known as the inferior mediastinum, and they are subdivided into anterior, that refers to the structures located anterior to the heart and pericardium, such as the thymus, mammary vessels, and lymph nodes. The middle mediastinum, it refers to the structures located within the pericardium as heart, nerves, lymph nodes, and great vessels. The posterior mediastinum, it refers to the structures located posterior to the pericardium. We have the descending aorta, esophagus, azygous venous system, thoracic duct, and paraaortic, esophageal, and uh, paraspinal nodes. So the mediastinum, it contains appreciable amount of fat, lymph nodes, and great vessels. That's why it is uh, very uh, well visualized on CT and MRI. Okay, shifting to the heart, as a gross anatomy of the heart is a pyramidal in shape and lies obliquely in the chest. Its uh, square-shaped base points posteriorly and the elongated apex to the left and inferiorly. The left atrium forms the base or posterior part, the right atrium forms the right border, the left ventricle forms apex and left border, the left ventricle forms the anterior part. While the right the ventricle forms the anterior part. Right, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the inferior, the diaphragmatic part of the heart is formed by the uh, both ventricles, uh, anteriorly and a small part of right atrium posteriorly where the inferior vena cava enters this chamber. The pericardium uh, is a closed sac consisting of parietal and visceral layers that enclose a potential space which uh, contains 20 to 25 milliliter of serous fluid. It is dropped over the heart and great vessels the visceral layer adheres to the uh, myocardium and is also known as the epicardium. The parietal layer is free, except inferiorly where it is bound to the central tendon of the diaphragm, and superiorly where it fuses with the uh, covering of the uh, great vessels. Uh, some fat is present between the epicardium and myocardium, that's increasing with the age of the individual. Uh, fat is also present between the pericardium and mediastinal pleura, and it may be extensive in the anterior and lateral cardiophrenic angle, that's known as the pericardial fat pad. The right atrium uh, has a smooth posterior wall into which the great veins uh, drain. The coronary uh, sinus um, drain into the posterior wall between the orifice of the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid valve. The anterior wall has muscular ridge that are continuous with the muscular ridge of the atrial appendage. The 
interatrial septum bears an oval depression on its lower part that known as the fossa ovalis which is the remnants of the uh, mm. foramen ovale that is uh, transferring يعني, between the so, foramen ovale between right and left atria is in the fetus when it, uh, the yes. baby is born this foramen will close, close and its yes. place will be mm -hmm. that's called fossa ovalis yes. okay that it's transferring the and yani during um, the intrauterine life blood. yes it's transferring the oxygenated blood from maternal circulation to the uh, fetus the right atrial appendage is roughly triangular and projects upward and forward and to the left it is the only part of the right atrium to contribute to the cardiac outline on the lateral view the right ventricle is roughly triangular and uh, triangular and flattened from front to back as the left ventricle bulges into it. The lower half of the right uh, ventricle normally touches the lower part of the sternum on the lateral view. The entrance to the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. This has three leaflets or cusps, each attached to the, pulmon, uh, to the papillary muscles of the ventricular wall by several cordy tendony. The pulmonary valve has three semilunar cusps, right, and left anterior and posterior cusp it is the most uh, anterior and superior of all the cardiac valves the left atrium is square uh, in uh, shape square shape and uh, smooth walled and forms the upper posterior part of the heart on the lateral view it receives the uh, four pulmonary vents in its upper part It has a long, narrow, trabeculated appendage that projects anteriorly on the left side of the pulmonary trunk, overlapping its origin. This is embedded in fat and is not seen on the frontal view unless it's enlarged. The left ventricle is a thick-walled, finely trabeculated um, finely trabeculated cavity that uh, is uh, shaped like an elongated uh, cone being roughly circular in cross section it forms the lower half of the posterior part of the heart on the lateral view the mitral valve separates it from the uh, left uh, atrium this uh, valve has two cusps anterior and posterior cusps whose uh, free margins are attached to the ventricular wall by a cordy tendony instead of a muscular uh, conus as on the right. The uh, aortic uh, valve has three semilunar cusps, uh, anterior and uh, right and left posterior. Above each cusp is a localized dilatation or sinus, that's the sinus of Valzava. The blood supply uh, to the heart. The uh, right ventricle and the inferior wall of the ve left ventricle are supplied by the right coronary artery, uh, which is the uh, branch of the uh, right uh, anterior sinus of Valzava. The right uh, coronary artery it passes uh, downward uh, to the uh, right of the uh, pulmonary trunk to reach the anterior uh, atrioventricular groove where it anastomoses with the left uh, coronary artery and it gives branch to the atria to the ventricle to the sinoatrial node av node conus uh, branch and uh, uh, we have the uh, remaining of the uh, left ventricle it is supplied by the left coronary artery which is the branch of the posterior left uh, sinus of valzava the left coronary artery it passes downward uh, just left to the pulmonary uh, trunk and uh, continues as an anterior uh, in, uh, no, it uh, continues as a left uh, circumflex artery where it passes in the posterior uh, atrioventricular groove and anastomosis with the uh, right coronary artery. Where is the circumflex? It's not visualized here. Visualized. Mm -hmm. no, I know, this is the main circumflex. It's not the... Uh, this is this one, this one. Yes, uh, but the, the left le left divides into yes, circumflex and it continues and, uh, as a left circumflex artery in the interventricular groove. This is anterior descending. You are pointing to the anterior descending artery. Listen. No, no. I mean, uh, here is.
the circumflex. This, the horizontal one, is the circumflex. Yes, yes. And the vertical one is the interventricular, interventricular the left anterior descending. Yes, which is the branch of the... Both of them branch from the left coronary. Yes, left coronary artery. Okay. Um, so left coronary is a short, very short vessel. Yes, because... And it divides in immediately into circumflex, circumflex and, and the anterior, anterior interve interventricular, interventricular artery. Descending. And yes. that's why they call it a three vessel disease. Sometimes one person has a very bad heart disease. Okay, they call it one vessel disease, two vessel disease, three vessel disease. Three vessel disease, they mean the right and anterior uh, descending and circumflex. Mm -hmm. Because the left coronary is so small, so short, they don't, uh, yani, uh, it doesn't count. It's mm -hmm. so okay. very short. Okay. okay. It has one, has one, like two arteries. The uh, circumflex and the interventricular exactly. artery. The venous uh, drainage of the heart in uh, approximately 60% of the cases, it um, follows the uh, coronary artery to the uh, coronary sinus that's located within the posterior uh, atrioventricular uh, groove. And the other tributaries that uh, drain the uh, heart are the uh, great cardiac, posterior, uh, left uh, ventricular vein, middle cardiac, the uh, anterior cardiac veins. Radiology of the heart on the chest radiograph, the cardiac contour is seen on the frontal and lateral chest film. In a PA film uh, are uh, preferred to AP ones as the heart being anterior and is closer to the film, it's not magnified to the same extent as with the AP film. The aortic and mitral valve are the most important to recognize as they are most often affected by the disease. On PHS radiograph, the valves lie close to a line uh, from the left atrium to the lowest point of the uh, right heart border, as it's visualized here. The, uh, on the lateral view, the pulmonary and aortic valve lie just above uh, a line drawn from T5 to the apex of the heart, to the apex of the heart, while the mitral and aortic valve ju uh, lie just below uh, this line. On fluoroscopy, uh, it's usually used for the uh, valvular heart disease. If the valves are calcified, they may be distinguished by their characteristic motion as well as their location. The aortic valve uh, has a to and fro motion in the plane of the ascending aorta that is upwards, backwards, and to the right. While the mitral valve has a circular as well as to and uh, fro motion, in the left anterior oblique plane of the left atria, uh, atrium and ventricle. So we, they, uh, uh, each of them has a characteristic motion and by their specific location can be uh, diagnosed. Uh, on echocardiography... Oh, but if you see it, they are calcified, they are diseased. Yes. Yani, Normal. You, you see it by fluoroscopy, it's abnormal. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, ultrasound. Yes. Uh, the ultrasound is probably the best modality for imaging the internal anatomy of the heart, the walls, the chambers, and the valves. Transesophageal echography it allows much closer inspection of the heart because of the close opposition of the uh, left atrium to the anterior wall of the distal esophagus without intervening air or lung. Mm -hmm. On computed tomography, that's two slides. Yeah. On computer tomography, uh, it shows the heart and vessels in cross-section. The pericardium may be identified between epicardial and mediastinal fat. So when we take a CT, uh, first we take a non-contrast one. On uh, CT, uh, the um, uh, coronary arterial wall calcification may be seen. The presence of wall calcification is used as an indirect marker of atherosclerosis and plaque. Then using dynamic or multi-slice uh, uh, CT, the dynamic scans are obtained during intravenous infusion of contrast, uh, demonstrating the uh, cardiac chambers and vessels to a great advantage. The ECG gating allows image to be uh, acquired during the same part of the cardiac cycle, thus reduce, reducing motion artifact and providing better image. And the motion artifacts is the main problem uh, uh, when taking a CT, so it can be reduced by using this uh, ECG. Uh, yeah, ECG gating, or uh, we can uh, use 
the beta blockers uh, that to reduce the cardiac rate to less than 70 beats per minute or taking uh, rapidly uh, view, rapid views to a multi uh, slices the pro uh, the pre uh, procedural uh, sublingual nitrates uh, produce coronal dilatation which in combination with rapid contrast infusion by a pump injector produce dramatic contrast filling of the main uh, coronary vessels by acquiring data in isotopic uh, uh, voxels isotropic, isotropic uh, voxels image can be uh, reconstructed in innum innumerable planes to allow interrogation of the uh, main uh, coronary arteries as the branch and attract in coronal so, sagittal axial and oblique planes there is on the non contrast image there is something called coronary calcium score it's just a software. Software, you go like the calcium score for this patient is Rakam. And according to this number, uh, you can decide, or the cardiologist can decide whether he's at a high risk or low risk for having a heart attack or heart disease, things like that, on the non contrast image. Then, the density, the density the according to the density of the calcification and the size, the surface area, the software just calculate the whole thing and give you an absolute number. And they can manage it accordingly, okay? Mm -hmm. On the non contrast. Then they push contrast and see what's going on. Also, the plugs. Yeah. Like visualize. On magnetic resonance imaging, uh, uh, the applications for MRI in cardiac uh, radiology are steadily increasing. Acquisitions of image is gated to the ECG to overcome motion artifact, and faster scan times uh, have improved image quality. The cardiac chambers, valves, and major vessels may be imaged in any plane to give information previously only obtained with uh, cardioangiography and with the added advantage of demonstrating the uh, soft tissues. The pericardium is shown as a dark line, 1 to 2 millimeters uh, thick. In general, non-contrast study are employed to assess uh, cardiac wall morphology. In contrast, bullous tracking uh, following contrast injection is employed to image the coronary artery or circulation. And thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much. It was a good presentation and very well focused.